And we begin tonight with shots fired on MLK Drive after the city's Juneteenth Day Parade and celebration had have end it. Yeah, here's what we heard on the police scanner this afternoon just after four o'clock. We got uh, four patients there to require a med unit, one requiring a VLS transfer at this time. With that being said, let's get right out to our Mary McCarr who's out on the scene and Miriam, what can you tell us so far? Well, Charles and Ryan, we are told that at least five people were injured as a result of this shooting, but we're not sure exactly how many people were shot. You can see behind me that they've still closed off most of the area where that shooting took place further down MLK. Thankfully, it's cleared up a bit in the sense there are no more paramedics on scene, but there's still, as you can see, a motorcade of officers that are blocking the road from people walking to and from. We're still trying to figure out exactly how many people, again, were injured, but our team did spoke speak with a woman, I should say, who witnessed it as it happened. Uh, the shots went off, and then I looked up, and I saw one girl limping with her leg, and the other girl was shot on the ground with her head with a shot of her neck. At that time, it was like four or five of them, but then they just keep shooting on and off. You can see in here behind me, DPW crews are still working hard to clean up after what was a very successful parade. If you watched our coverage this morning, there was a lot of great energy and great events that took place. Um, and Charles and Ryan, you can attest to it yourselves. I know you were both there this morning. So we're still working to hear more details from officers on what exactly took place as everyone was cleaning up at the end of this parade today. And we'll, of course, bring you the latest on air and online once we get that information. Miriam, thanks, and we are expecting a briefing from police, and we will bring that, that, that to you as soon as we get that information. We do have video that was sent into our news team as shots rang out. We did blur the faces of the people involved and stop the video right after the trigger was pulled. We do want to warn you, this video may be disturbing for some viewers. Jason. Again, Milwaukee police are expected to uh, hold the briefing soon with more details. Uh, we will be bringing that to you and any updates on air and online. You can watch TMJ4 News streaming 24-7 on Roku and in the TMJ4 News app. Hey, back here live outside Pfizer Forum, we are seeing the crowd pick up ahead of tonight's big Republican presidential debate. It's unclear if North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum will be participating tonight. Now, he did qualify to be on stage, but according to his team, Burgum told his, tore his Achilles tendon. He was playing some basketball here in Milwaukee. You can see him uh, getting a tour of the facilities in a walking boot and on crutches. This was during the candidate's walkthrough this afternoon. Scripps News caught up with Burgum. Uh, during the tour. If you're going to lead this country, you ought to be able to stand on one leg for two hours. You know, it's not, it's not dancing with the stars. I mean, come on. So, I mean, I'd have to scratch if it was that. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I, so pain's not, pain's not a factor at this point. So you'll be up there tonight? Find out after I go to the doctor and see what he says. All right, with just hours left before the first debate, here's a look at who is in and where they will be standing on stage. From left to right, Asa Hutchinson, then Chris Christie, Mike Pence, Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, and Doug Burgum. The front runner, former President Donald Trump, is skipping tonight's debate. So former President Trump will not be here tonight, but his supporters and surrogates are in Milwaukee. He also released a statement saying in part, quote, tonight's Republican undercard event really shouldn't even be called a debate, but rather an audition to be part of President Trump's team in his second term. Ex-Fox News host Tucker Carlson expected to post a taped interview later tonight with Donald Trump. And NBC News has learned that the former president plans to travel to Fulton County tomorrow afternoon to surrender himself at the county jail in Georgia tomorrow night. I haven't had a chance to see inside Pfizer Forum yet, and uh, we had permission from Fox News to show you some amazing drone video showing inside Pfizer and the debate stage tonight. They can make the inside of Pfizer Forum look like pretty much anything they want. It is such a flexible space. We have yeah. seen NBA finals right. happen there. Uh, we're Concerts. going to have a political convention there next, sum, uh, next summer, but it's all dressed up for a debate tonight. They shared a little bit of drone video with us to give us a look at what the setup is going to look like. 
So there's the drone going up the stairs into the uh, general atrium area of Pfizer Forum. If you've been to a game there, then you know what that looks like. Now, here we are going into the bowl area, and this is what the stage will look like when you turn on your television tonight to watch the presidential debate, which starts at 8 o'clock. Uh, Brett Beyer and Martha McCallum will be the host there. You see them on the stage. This was part of their morning show this morning. All right, not far from that stage is the spin room. That is where the candidates' aides and maybe the candidates themselves will appear after the debate to try to put their best face possible on the performance. And our chief political reporter, Charles Benson, is live in the spin room right now to give us an idea of what to expect tonight. Hi, Charles. Hi, Steve and Susan. Yeah, this is the place to be right now for one reason. There's air conditioning in here, so it's nice and cool. But after the debate, it will also be the key place to be because this is where we're going to see these hundreds of journalists that are in the spin room talk to the candidates or their surrogates, asking them questions about what was said and what was not said. The spin room has become almost as equally as important as the debate because it's a chance to to talk to the candidates about what happened on that debate stage. Normally, we do get a chance to see some of the candidates, but if we don't see the candidates, we'll see their surrogates. And so they call it the spin room because I'm guaranteeing you all eight candidates will come into this room and say they won the debate tonight. But the truth will be in how voters look at what happens on a debate stage. So after two hours of answering questions, they'll have to come in here to answer more questions. Live inside the spin room, inside Pfizer Forum, Charles Benson, TMJ4. Not a bead of sweat on his forehead, Susan. Look at that. <laughs> Just a fascinated, fascinating time tonight after two hours of debate. Look forward to your coverage, Charles. Well, months of preparations have been leading up to tonight's debate. Mary Jo Ola live outside Pfizer Forum uh, to give us a look at how things are on the ground outside the place where this is happening tonight. Mary Jo. Hey there, Steve and Susan. We are on Bell Phillips Avenue, which is now closed to traffic since it leads right up to Pfizer Forum behind me here. This is the most activity we've seen all day long leading up to the debate. You can see MPD has one of their armored vehicles outside the perimeter of that fencing you see. There's also a growing crowd. Uh, when I went up there, it was mostly uh, people here to support former President Donald Trump, who's obviously absent from Milwaukee, but also some media here to cover the debate. Uh, but you know, people I talked to today say that while they won't be inside Pfizer Forum, they will most certainly be watching what goes down tonight. Maybe it was the heat or the overall political activity. The Deer District was relatively quiet in the final hours leading up to the first Republican primary debate at Pfizer Forum. I was really surprised because we got a bunch of emails saying like everything's gonna be blocked off, it's gonna be like chaos. That's like kind of the vibe we got. It's framed as a pretty important event, right? The stretch of restaurants and bars nearby also calm. Some of them told DMJ4 News off camera that they didn't expect a significant surge in customers because of the debate. There's not as many people, at least initially, as I thought there would be, but the hype is still here. You know, there are people talking about it. USA! USA! While former President Donald Trump is absent from Milwaukee, his supporters are not. It might be quiet for other candidates, but we are not being quiet for President Donald Trump. I would like to see the, the president show up. Uh, as, Heard an interview that Ryan's previous gave early in the morning. He thought it'd probably been a smart thing to do. I kind of agree with his assessment. Outside of Pfizer Forum, Wisconsin's Republican Senator Ron Johnson says uniting the party is necessary to winning the White House. Do you have a feeling which way who is going to come out on top? No, but uh, what I obviously hope is that the Republican candidates uh, relay to America their vision for this country. Uh, I, I hope they all dedicate themselves to healing the division. All right, again, here we are just shortly after 4 o'clock. The crowd just starting to grow. We'll have to see how it turns out tonight. Live in downtown Milwaukee, Mary Jo, at TMJ4 News. All right, Mary Jo, thank you. There are a handful of rallies and protests set to start in the next few hours as well with those for and against the Republican Party. Now, this is a live look from No Studios where the Service Employees International Union and Fight for 15 will be holding a protest against the Republican Party. A lot of people are there who support the GO, who are uh, who support the GOP as well. They are in town too, and they include Moms for Liberty, a conservative political action organization. 
organizers will start showing up at No Studios soon. As you can see, some have already gathered, and they will be marching about a half mile to Pfizer Forum to make their feelings known about the GOP. And our Sean Gallagher will join us live at 4.30 from that protest. This is the Republicans' night here in Milwaukee, but the Democrats are also making their presence felt in town. The party leaders denounced the GOP and their presidential candidates at a news conference earlier today. Wisconsin Democratic Party Chair Ben Wickler said the election is, quote, a choice between mega extremism and common sense, end quote. DNC Chair Jamie Harrison offered this assessment of the Republican presidential candidates. No matter who you pick, this group is as extreme as it gets. A bag full of MAGA apples and they are all rotten. They are wildly out of step with the American people. Democrats say President Joe Biden deserves a second term based on the way he has handled the economy. If you are trying to get down here, pretty much every street around the arena will be blocked off for the debate, so keep that in mind. Milwaukee police also say that if you're parked on these streets that you see on the map in red, you will be towed. You can catch special coverage leading up to tonight's debate from 6 to 7 p.m. Charles Benson, Shannon Sims live right where we're standing now as the candidates prepare to take the stage. We will also have post-debate coverage in an hour-long TMJ4 News at 10 immediately following that debate tonight. First tonight at six, that driver is just one of more than 4,000 caught by state troopers driving over 100 miles per hour since 2020. And it is a dangerous trend that's become too common on Wisconsin freeways. In tonight's Project Drive Safer report, Ben Jordan shows you dash cam video of the reckless behavior and takes you behind the wheel with a state trooper. 101 in Racine County. 102 in Kenosha County. We're late for work. And 103 in Ozaki County. 103 is what I thought, yeah. Three examples in recent months of state troopers clocking triple digits. One of which was in the middle of a rainstorm. Dash camera video shows this black car zipping past law enforcement. Ten seconds later, he's out of sight. The Illinois driver was hit with five citations, driving 32 over the limit, reckless driving, too fast for conditions, no proof of insurance, and no driver's license on him to show to the trooper. In the rain, reckless driving, man. State Patrol took us behind the wheel for a ride along so we could witness the problem in real time. The high speed that I ever clocked was 121 miles an hour. Master Trooper Brendan Brown has been a state patrolman for 23 years. He spends his shifts cruising the freeways in southeastern Wisconsin looking for driving violations. Have you noticed over the past three years more people are speeding egregiously? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think there's any question that speeds have certainly risen, especially on the freeway system. I don't think that's in question at all. Wisconsin Department of Transportation data shows it's indisputable. In 2019, State Patrol caught 583 drivers going at least 100 miles per hour. Each year since, that figure has more than doubled. Within two minutes of patrolling on the median. There we go, 88. Trooper Brown caught a driver going 18 over the limit. Well, the reason you're stopped today is because of your speed. $250.90 right there. Give me a tap on the uh, No, not for 88 and a 70. Trooper Brown believes there are two main reasons behind skyrocketing citations for dangerous speeds. Light traffic during the early days of the COVID lockdown. There were much fewer motorists out. I think it gave people an opportunity to increase their speeds because they weren't being weighed down by other traffic. 
Secondly, Trooper Brown says newer cars drive much smoother and quieter to the point where people may not recognize how fast they're truly going. So you think it's kind of baked in at this point? I, I think it is. Speeding 25 over the limit on the interstate comes with a $326 fine, six demerit points against your driving record, and insurance rate hikes. But one thing Trooper Brown says most drivers don't know is you also lose your driving privileges for 15 days. The mandatory suspension that we have now really hits a driver's license. Several consequences that speed is kill somebody or you. far outweighed by the dangers. Reporting in Waukesha, Ben Jordan, TMJ4 News. All right, Ben, thanks. And we have more shocking video to show you tonight. It's not one, but two Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office squad cars struck on the interstate in a matter of minutes, injuring a deputy yesterday morning. State surveillance video shows a driver slamming into a sheriff's SUV. A second driver hits another squad car, which knocks into a deputy, leaving him injured. Inspector Doug Holton says he and his colleagues understand the risk of the job, but things like this can be avoided. And every crash on the freeway can be avoided. Um, we don't call them accidents. We call them crashes because somebody is responsible for it. Holton also says the injured officer will be OK, but it could have been much worse. The squads can be replaced, not people. Well, right now, investigators are trying to figure out what led to this serious crash on Humboldt and Wright this morning. Video captured by a resident shows that white SUV barreling down a construction zone in Milwaukee's River West neighborhood. Now, before slamming into a tree, police say that three people ages 18 to 24 were inside that car. Firefighters had to use the jaws of life to free the driver and the front passenger from the vehicle. All three, though, were taken to a local hospital. Investigators say speed appears to be a factor. TMJ4 is keeping tabs on monthly citation and crash data all across the state and in the city of Milwaukee. If you'd like to check out where reckless driving trends stand right now, all you have to do is scan the code that's up on your screen.